Jefferson County. This is Councilman Brett Sanders recapping November the 19th council meeting. A uh, lot of stuff on our agenda tonight, but most of it was uh, pretty much cut and dry. Matter of fact, uh, we did have a, a fee agreement on uh, a spec building on I-85 and investing uh, $5 million. Uh, the taxes on it from from now to when the buildings there is, is over a $14,000 a year increase. We also had tonight which uh, code enforcement officers for the city of Belton. As you aware that uh, our Anderson County Sheriff's Department is now providing services for the Belton area and in doing so they did not have a code enforcement officer. So, so now uh, Belton, will have, Belton will have a code enforcement officer which Belton will reimburse the county for for the expenses of those officers so glad what we could uh, assist uh, the city of Belton we also had uh, an agreement or a resolution or second reading tonight on uh, backup generator for our Civic Center and I don't think a lot of people know our Civic Center is an emergency command center that is recognized by the, by the state so that will uh, allow them to uh, have power when if in the situation that, that there was a total power loss that they can still operate emergency management and emergency systems out of our civic center. Also tonight we had a, a discussion and it's going uh, second reading on uh, 100 foot buffers on any subdivision and there were some uh, changes tonight or amended and prior to third reading, I think there'll be some committee meetings and some other things to, to get this dialed in. It was 100 foot, but I'm going to read these for sake of the importance and not wanting to miss something out. But uh, for less than 50 lots, a 50 foot undisturbed area around the entire boundary of the property, 50 or greater lots, a 100 foot undisturbed area around the entire boundary. Repairing and other buffers may be included within these buffers and are not in addition to these. So uh, again, I think it will help us in, in getting you know a, a better quality product out there. I think uh, council's concern is you know a lot of times uh, with these additional costs, it gets transferred to the, the buyer and we, we still got to uh, get our, our heads around the fact that hey something needs to be done we're, we're being uh, proactive on some other things that we've done in the past and now I think these buffers will allow us to uh, tweak and get together not only with, with, with the citizens but also with the builders and, and let them know you know this is what we're, we're expecting and uh, hopefully um, when this is all said and done, you'll have, have a higher quality uh, product out there and be a little more uh, site or site friendly. And also, it would help also with uh, any, uh, well, it's got to help with stormwater issues. And uh, my thing is, I understand uh, the need for buffers. I think uh, right now it's kind of a blanket type deal. I think, uh, you know, each individual property probably has different. Uh, some may, I would think, may require, require more than 100 foot. Some may not require that, especially when you get around rivers and streams and creeks and, and lakes and things of that nature or wetlands. So, uh, you know, prior to third reading, there's a lot more work to be done, but we are uh, grinding and working toward uh, coming up with a, a better product and better solution for the citizens of Anderson County. Also, uh, Tonight we had uh, a couple deals putting in the uh, park or industrial park for Greenville County, which basically uh, Anderson County gets a percentage of the tax revenue collected, and it will allow Greenville and, and, and us when we do uh, something in, in our park agreement, it allows us to and them to uh, qualify for state incentives that we may not be able to qualify for. So I'm uh, glad we could help out Greenville, glad that we're going to uh, see some revenue coming in off of that. And they work with us uh, very well and we continue to ha have a good positive relationship. Uh, tonight we had uh, E&I, which is on I-85, uh, a company here that uh, 300 new employees expanding uh, an almost another 500,000 square foot at a different location. And so basically what we did, we uh, readjusted or uh, restructured the fee agreement because the, the expansion areas that they're in now is in different school districts and it kind of 
we got to make sure that each school gets their percentage or share of what's coming in. So that uh, basically done just to clarify things and make things a little smoother. Uh, also tonight we had a uh, resolution proclamation honoring start honoring Sergeant First Class Isaiah Loreno, and this gentleman at the Civic Center during the hurricane. Uh, I went by several times, took food up there to him, and man, this guy, I mean, he, he was a hero. From the National Guard, he came in, uh, he worked with our teams, our emergency staff people, and just really did a tremendous job and was a great liaison between the National Guard and our team. And uh, not on recognizing him tonight, but it was nice when he got up and got to say a few words that, he was talking about how simple the transition was and what great people we had in the positions in our emergency management system. So um, I think, you know, great people breed great people. And I think, uh, you know, not only recognizing him, but for the, the fact that he also recognized our employees and the caliber employees we had. So that was very good. He had his wife and his kids here. Uh, and like I told him, all, all our military are heroes. And then uh, to see uh, what this gentleman stepped up and done to, to help the citizens of Anderson County, and, and most people never even know that he was here, and, and the efforts and, and the work that he put in. So I was glad to see uh, him recognized, the, the Army National Guard recognized. And that pretty much sums up tonight. Uh, I want to uh, wish everyone a, a, a happy Thanksgiving. Everyone stay safe and uh, enjoy spending time with your family. Thank you.